Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload, as you can tell by the video, is going to be my January forecast outlook. Um, and uh, hopefully we uh, could come to an agreement on this forecast, me and the viewers. Well, this is obviously my forecast. Um, things will definitely not be 100% right. Uh, first, I want to show you, though, why I, you know what, what the things are to come, and then I'll show you my final forecast um, towards the end of the video. Before we do that, consider subscribing to this channel. Consider liking this video if you subscribe. Really helps this channel grow. And I mean, I'm not forcing you. Just check out this channel and decide for yourself if you like this video uh, and you're a returning viewer. I just want to let you know that that really, really helps the video. So uh, consider doing that as well. Right now, we're looking at the latest GFS model run again. A uh, pretty nice system across the Northeast. We talked about it yesterday about the upcoming uh, possible snow system. Notice that uh, it doesn't seem as if the GFS really is doing what the European is, which is showing more snow. The European is putting out quite a bit of snow across the Northeast, while the GFS isn't. Uh, some people are leaning, leaning towards the European, some leaning are towards the GFS. I'm kind of in between, maybe slightly more leaning towards the GFS with the lighter snowfall amounts. Maybe doesn't seem as significant as previously thought. But uh, definitely a powerful system in terms of the rain to the south and the Northeast, and possible some in Illinois, Indiana, Iowa. Uh, Michigan some snow as well notice we go into the future we go and we see a clipper coming through the general thing I'm not gonna really talk about these storm systems. I'm already starting to get off one by one I want to just show you the pattern so notice that it is Generally pretty warm compared to where we could be where you know where uh, uh, Even the average really I mean there's gonna be some average temperatures like right here You could see it's six seventh it looks on a chillier side Maybe a, a trough maybe a little system off to the northeast if you were to look at the temperature anomalies they're, they're warmer to the south and cooler to the north kind of like what you would typically see with the temperatures but this time the contrasts are, I guess are even more because of the temperature anomalies and for some reason this computer is just uh, acting pretty pretty slowly so I do apologize if this uh, will take a little bit to load and if you were to look at the uh, temperature anomalies of the upcoming I guess long range they they aren't really too impressive in terms of the cold but I'm gonna remind you that just because they aren't impressive doesn't mean that there won't be snow as storms really don't need that much cold air in January. They don't really need that dry cold air as a lot of this cold air doesn't have lots of moisture. So it's better when it's just like this, it's kind of like this flip pattern for bigger storms. So that's more exciting news. For that, you can see there's a system even possibly to the south. Um, no cold really at all, I would say. If we were to look at the anomalies now, uh, it's more centered across the west and north rather than the south. You can see quite a bit of, uh, if you will, warm temperatures across the United States. Uh, possibly with this model run again they flip all over 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 to the place yesterday they were showing colder and long range now they're showing warmer generally it's best to look at the ensembles and see what they are showing as the ensembles isn't just one model which can be very very variant even the ensembles can be very variant if you will but um not to the extent i would say as one single model and now this is taking kind of a long time to load, so if this would load, this would be this would be amazing. But uh, basically, what we're going to be seeing is more of a pattern that is warm across the south and east, and cold across the north and west, and then that cold air slipping into the southern and eastern U.S. in the longer range, like the second half of January. Now, will we not see any snow because of that? No, it seems like it still will be snow even for the Midwest and Northwest, the, even the East Coast and Northeast. It's just that uh, if you're looking for a brutal cold just all by itself, I don't think you'll really find that yet here in January. Uh, I think you will find some good snow shots. So notice that uh, right now we're looking at a flipping pattern, just storm, cold, snow, snow, cold, rain, and it's just all over the place. No real uh, pattern at all. More warm than cold, I would say. Then we start getting into that defined pattern. Notice we have warmer crust the south and east cold across the north and west and I notice if we put this in motion this starts spilling to the north to the south and east in a longer range and that warm air kind of starts lagging behind uh, and you can see that in fact that warm air doesn't really uh, it's, it's stubborn but so is that cold air and eventually it does uh, kind of dominate more of the United States as this thing is really uh, you know if it unleashes itself that may just really be late January may just be brutal but for now I we don't have that certainty so I backed off an actual forecast you'll see that I only put the cold air locations across the further northern U.S. and the western U.S. while the southern U.S. seems pretty warm. 
Um, and you may see, oh yeah, that's typical of January. Well, sometimes, you know, my, I mean, not so nice. My forecasts are always based on average. So uh, sometimes, yes, the southeast is on my forecast cold while the north is warm. Uh, that does occur. It actually happened last year. And uh, that's, you know, it's based on average. Not It's not like, oh, here will be warmer, here will be colder. That's obvious. You need to be genius in order to do that. Um, but let's look at the EPS ensembles. This only goes out to 240 hours. So I want to bear in mind that this does not go as far out as the GFS. Notice pretty similar uh, regime of pattern. We have uh, generally a, a warmer pattern across the south and east and a little bit colder across the north uh, and west. Notice that uh, this really starts building and they're just fighting each other, these these uh, these uh, air masses. But that's good news again because for these locations, it doesn't necessarily mean it won't be snowy, uh, as you could still get snow with uh, minimal, uh, you know, temperatures that are borderline. Even sometimes in the 40s, we could get snow. So uh, notice that you can see right there, uh, there's those two air masses, and in between those two air masses, we could, this is where all the storms always go, and that's called the baroclinic zone, kind of where uh, the 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 only path a storm can take you can't just like ride right through here or ride right through there. It takes the highway through here and that kind of you know could deliver snow on this side that side depending on where this sets up and it seems like these locations will be stormy and snowy if this were to set up uh, this pattern wouldn't hinder snow development only maybe the real cold but again it looks as if that will also be on its way in the future uh in the future of uh later part of January. This is kind of a repeat of last year. If you recall, January first half was warmer, then the second half things got real. We got a polar vortex and more snow. I think it will slowly escalate into that situation this year. And now let's look at the 8 to 14 day outlook. You could see 10 through the 16th, they say warm across the south and east, and then cooler across the west and northwest. And that seems about right, in my opinion. Maybe a little bit overdone. But uh, I think we'll be looking at, the, at that pattern. Notice my final, uh, my final, if you will, forecast calls for, uh, let's explain everything. First off, I want to address uh, the northern U.S. Nor notice there's Arctic air. I also expanded the area of snowy across the United States. The air reason I put snowy across the north and west, it seems like there will be many, many storms coming across there. So snowy, rainy, and there also will be quite a bit of cold with that rain. So when that rain does fall... It looks as if it will be uh, snow for a good portion of the, those, those areas. Sometimes that don't even see snow, like Seattle, Portland. You may actually see some snow in what, near January. I'm, I think that may be possible, especially as looking at the recent forecast. They're, they're looking pretty uh, impressive at the very least. And notice that uh, I just put snowy because of that. A little bit drier for the south and west. That's due to the reason I don't know if there will be many storms coming across this country from the south. Um, it seems like most of the storms will be originated from the Pacific that do occur here. However, that definitely uh, uh, is kind of also a more dry because compared to what you've been seeing, it's been very stormy. And I think it will just be more dry compared to what you've been seeing. Not necessarily maybe even from average, uh, but definitely will be noticeable as it will be more drier and not as much rain, which is probably a good thing. Notice the northern U.S., uh, North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, M Wisconsin, U.P. of Michigan, northern Michigan, portions of extreme northern Iowa, Nebraska, uh, northern Wyoming, and eastern Montana, uh, two-thirds of eastern Montana, not three-fourths. Notice I put Arctic air. I think that Arctic air will definitely be there in place, and it will be below average for those locations for a good portion of uh, January. And again, I went uh, pretty darn uh, conservative on a cold air. This is for the whole month of January, but I know that for the 15th, okay, uh, through the 15th, this Arctic air will rather sit up here. But afterwards, this possibly may dip down into the U.S. and uh, into the southern U.S. as well. Uh, you know, more further to the south, which could really uh, bring the snow chances up as well for the southern locations. Notice that I put stormier right below that. I think that just because it won't really be warm or cold across these locations, and it could be warmer i still put storm here as there will be a lot of storm potential um as these pacific uh, storms come through they could uh also take tracks not only ones i showed you earlier like giant systems do what we've seen with the winter storm gauge and ezekiel already this year but i think there could be uh, several systems where uh, it comes uh, across the pacific and just produces a little you know some snow across the these locations so i put stormy across these locations and then cold and snow across the northeast are definitely especially across these locations i put the possibility of cold and snow to the elevated chance due to the fact that uh, these storms that come across these locations will end up riding across here 
and definitely produce quite a bit of snow for you guys over here. As I think Janu January will be snowy for you across upstate New York, Pennsylvania, and Ohio, and West Virginia, as those that were asking me. Uh, notice I put blizzard across the northeast. Doesn't mean that it will be dominated by blizzards. I think there's a chance for a blizzard. Uh, there's some, you know, with those, with those increased storms, we have an increased chance of one of those turning into a nor'easter. I wouldn't say January would be your month, really. That's why I put a question mark after that. As I think, I have a feeling that uh, that blizzard potential will be more safe for February as uh, January January will be more of a month of a uh, rain snow sometimes generally warmer though uh, but I did put a blizzard uh, question mark potential as one could definitely spawn notice a uh, rain here across the southeast uh, that's what we've been seeing I think that's what we will continue to see uh, and I should have put warmer here as well uh, if I were to put these locations now uh, out of the gray the ones in the gray here and you're west of the, or east of this line I'd probably put above average as well um, and this is kind of where that cold air would possibly meet the warm air, which could obviously spawn a bigger system across the east coast. Here I put a giant question mark. You may be wondering, like, okay, so you don't know. Well, yeah, I don't. That's why I put a question mark. I really have no comment for this area. Uh, it seems like if it doesn't see have a lot of potential for either. It could be snowier once you get over here. Could be a little bit drier if, you know, across these locations. Just didn't decide to put it in because we don't know. Maybe a little bit more extended and maybe a little bit less. Um, stormier, these conditions may apply to these locations as well. And the cold and snow really will stay there. Rainier and warmer I would probably put for these locations like I mentioned. But otherwise, uh, this location especially, this one in the middle, uh, it could go either way. I would just say cold and snow, uh, cold and warm kind of uh, interchange interchangeably. So that's about it, guys. Again, uh, it's a little tough one this time, as I think it will be a transition through the month from the colder, uh, from the warmer pattern across the south and east to a colder general U.S. pattern. So thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.